Hello, hello, and welcome back to Minotaur Hotel. Things are getting... a little... I hesitate to say the word crazy, but I'm glad that Oscar is here, so you know... Is everything bad? Nah. As something in the air crackles like bolts of heaven sent lightning. You can feel every single hair upon your outstretched arms stand on end at its touch. Stop this! What the hell are you- what the hell is wrong with you? He gives no hint of having heard your voice. It's as though you- you aren't even there. Asterion moves behind you, offering his strength to aid the peacock in his struggle against whatever- whatever hold the delivery man's stare has, has upon him. He grips the bird by the shoulder, doing his best to pull the guest, the younger bull's Pedro, out of harm's way. But much like thrice-cursed Sis Sisyphus, the Minotaur toils to, to, in vain. Then uh, another shout rise, right, rises uh, from your audience. This is going to be a good recording session. That's what it, that's what that's telling me. Uh, some of the guests, some of the watching guests, are shoved aside, while others pull back in mixture, mixed confusion and alarm as the gray-scaled figure slithers past them. Lord Hermes, please, your grace, please cease this. The snake surges forward to assist you, or reaching to, to reaching to take hold of Jean's wrist. He tugs and heaves, and does all he can to keep the stone in the man's grip from crashing down upon the peacock's skull or your own. And then you realize what he just said. Wait, Hermes? At long last, he hears you. The word, the name calls the god back to himself. Die! You! But not even the gods can fight necessity. What are you doing? Let go! Release me! Jean the Delivery Man, Hermes, Argo Slayer, struggles against you, the snake and himself for a wild and reeling moment. Do not stand in my way. I am. I act on behalf of he who who whose purpose are infinite. What the fuck are you talking about? Can't, can't you see? A pointing finger stabs in the peacock's direction, a knife seeking to hilt itself in the bird's beating heart. Those eyes, those hundred eyes, always watching, but I can, I have to. Hoofsteps clop to the tile behind you, a large, strong, steadying hand upon your back, the rumble of a sweat, sweet-sounding voice just above and behind your shoulder. Sir, I ask that you settle down. Flat, even casual in tone. You are intimidating the others. I know not what quarrel you have with the snake, nor this newcomer, but surely it can be resolved without violence. No, no, it must be done. Mr. Jean. Yeah, Jean Marie Clement. I am mandated by the laws of this realm to use force if you continue threatening the safety of our guests. I command you to settle down and apologize. Again, you receive a vivid reminder that your darling was once a proud God's, uh, God's beloved prince. Hermes at last turns his gaze towards Asterion. However, it is not the starry-eyed minotaur he sees. You. Io. Just what are you talking about? You may not have 100 eyes, but can you not see I'm trying to free you from your captivity? This man is delirious. We must take him to the infirmary. Hold on. Uh, hold on just a second. Argos, is this man really Hermes? You turn to address the snake, and as the two of you share a crucial few seconds of distraction, the apparent god breaks free of your hold. He released a primal cry, filled with surging lust from the peacock's blood, and rushes with weapon held high to fully put an end to his hated foe. You're barely able to follow what's happened next. In the blink of an eye, Asterion is beside the frenzied 
aggressor, first pulled back and steady to ready to strike, and then, following a thud, a rough thud, Hermes is splayed out in a groaning heap on the ground. There. No would I did not wish to do that, Mr. Jean, but I am bound to all to do all I can to protect the hotel's guests. Even from one of their own members. The pained, humi humiliated, defeated god stares up at the victorious bull with still eye still clouded eyes. Eo, you I I'm just trying to help. And then silence. With the one last woozy murmur, he slips into merciful unconsciousness. The curtain falls, and the tragedy comes to its bitter conclusion. Take a deep breath, good master. Gather your, your gather yourself. Savage, a uh, salvage what you can from the mess that has been made of your celebration. Oh hey. <laughs> you look around and spot a hint of blue scales and white feathers in the milling audience. The dragon and griffin slips through the crowd, having to excuse themselves as they uh, force their way through. Luke, Kota, get this man to the infirmary. Kota, stay with him while uh, there while Luke returns to the bar. We can't leave the guests unattended for too long. Uh, sure thing, boss man. Oh, there, there they go. Working together, the pair hefts uh, the com comatose god up all the floors and... Yeah, up, up off the floor, not all the floors. <laughs> okay. And then they uh, carry him away. Uh, the gathered throng, gathered throng pair parting uh, around their tiny pr 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 procession. That's one less thing to worry about, but far from enough to turn this night around. Just as just as you start thinking up a plan, however, your business partner ri rises to the occasion to your stead. He signals for all of the employees nearby to approach and dole out their tasks as to air as a to the air of a well-seasoned general directing his troops. No, no, Zepito, Gruggy, please listen very carefully. We have just witnessed a very complicated situation, and sometimes people can become very nervous after such an event. I want you to serve drinks and food, no alcohol for the next 15 minutes. However, if anyone feels ill, make sure they are they take a seat as soon as possible. Understood. The col the th uh, the cobalt's nod, chirp, and trot off to accomplish their mission. Gembish. I would like for you to check the cellar. On the very the very last shelf, we keep a few of a dozen bottles with red labels. They are among our best. I planned on keeping them for later in the night, but please serve them in about 15 minutes. That should lift everyone's spirits. First though, I want you to brew and serve a spot of a pot of coffee. Make sure the peacock gets a mug as soon as possible. Yes, sir. I just I know just the wine you're talking about. As, and as for the coffee, that should be done in no time flat. Themba, I was told the peacock fellow is related to our old security guard, and in fact, maybe his heir. This is our chance to redeem ourselves. First, prepare our finest room for him and his friend, then retrieve his grandfather's passport from the safe. By tomorrow morning, I want all of P's belongings organized, and a full report on what we owe this family. At once. Robert, uh, please check if any other guests were injured. And then check the rest of the floor for anything out of place. I would prefer not to have any more surprises tonight. Very well. I'll leave no stern unturned. While the others set about their their assignments, you begin going around to claim down, yeah, to calm down the guests. Uh, some are close to panicking, but it is nothing some creative maneuvering cannot pacify. 
you feel their questions and offer them reassurance, along with a lighthearted joke and comforting touch, or smile where appropriate. Once he has ensured the rest of the team has their orders, Asterion moves to join in on their effort. And so, as a single unit, you and your partner and your staff avert, avert yet another crisis, but even when the mood has been lifted back to something approaching Mary, there still remains more work to do. You and your darling exchange glances and come together to contemplate your next step. How are you holding up? Well enough. And you, Mr. Josh? Pretty much the same. I'm more worried about the peacock. The other... His friend called him Pedro, right? That is correct. Pedro and Oscar. Oscar and I had a brief conversation outside before this unpleasantness. I too wish to make sure they're alright. In that case, we'll go check up on them together, so I can introduce myself. We should probably check on Argos as well. After all, he was a pretty big help in getting Jean, getting Hermes to snap out of whatever the hell, hell that was. The Minotaur's expression shifts at the mention of the snake. If it is all the same, I shall leave that task to you. Very well. Which do you plan to on doing first? Let's go see how Pedro and Oscar are doing. The Minotaur, the other one, so Asterion. Okay, uh, sits beside the uh, shocked, unresponsive peacock, rubbing, yeah, rubbing his back as if the other man had choked on something. Uh, hey there, Oscar, right? Yes, sir. I'm Mr. Josh, one of the hotel's co-owners. My partner here told me the two of you had a small had a talk before this whole mess. Is that right? Yes, Mr. Asterion and me talked about um Minotaur stuff. I can imagine. From what I gathered while uh, talking with other mythicals, I understood that Minotaurs are very rare. Asterion, you had never met another one, right? I had never even heard of there being another one. Well, I'm sorry this special reunion ended up like this. I wish we could have given you and your friend a warmer welcome, Oscar. Something deeper within the peacock clicks. He looks up to you with bloodshot, tear-streaked eyes, tired and despondent. As he is, a breath of life fills him. Thank you. There's no need to thank me again. I'm the one who should apologize for not giving you a proper welcome. No, I mean, uh, thank you for helping s save my life. My name is Pedro, and I... He picks up a feather, a more scuffed than the ones on his tail, but still as vibrant from where it rests beside him and gazes into his unblinking eyes. Pedro? He doesn't respond. All his attention remains locked upon the feather in his hand. So, Mr. Mr. Josh, he's not doing well right now, but I have to tell you something. The reason we were looking for this place is because my buddy's grandpa used to work here a long time ago. He left something behind that Pedro's... that's supposed to be Pedro's inheritance. I know this... I got it. This is it. What do you mean? What is it? It's his feathers right here. It was my grandpa's. No, excuse me. But it's mine now, and... I can see everything that happened here when my grandpa was around. Even when the old owner, the Frenchman, went mad and kicked everyone out. I can't hear what happened. All I have is sight. But I can see it was the snake's fault. The old owner. He wasn't right in the head. I'm pretty sure he had some kind of disorder. And when his brother died, it sent him out of control. But what sealed the deal was the snake messing with him. He went down, right down a spiral staircase outside to the desert. My grandpa was escorting him, and the snake slithered up to meet them. They talked, and after that, all hell broke loose. So that's what you were talking about earlier. Pedro either doesn't hear you or chooses to ignore that. He turns towards his companion with the light 
A weak, flickering, but warm ember returning to his dull gaze. Oscar, with his feather, Dad and Grandma will be able to see what happened. They'll know Grandpa went crazy. I, God, this is it. We'll be able to close this chapter of our lives. Hell, maybe Dad and I will be able to get along. You sat down at the, uh... You stare down at the feather, a clutched with, like, a lifeline to the peacock's grasp. So innocent and unamusing, but the... <clears throat> but the experience of your tenure as master of the local... of the uh, hotel should have taught you well how deserving appearances... how deceiving appearances can be. You can see all that... all that from that... Bleh. You can see all that from a feather alone. Yeah, it's something my people can do. We... He looks up to you, and then to Asterion. Have you ever heard the story of Argos, uh, Panates, Panoti, pa Panopatis, Patis? I don't know. He was a giant with as many eyes as there are stars in the sky. A goddess, Hera, taught him with uh, guarding, tasked him with guarding a woman who had been turned into a hathier. Her name was Io. He was one. Of, she was one of Zeus's lovers. He had turned her into the into into that to hide her from his wife, but it didn't work. So Zeus sent his son Hermes to kill Argos and save Io. My people were born from his spilled blood, by the blessings of Hera. I reckon Hermes was trying to finish the job tonight. If I may interject for one moment. Pedro, yes. I knew your grandfather. I assume you could see that from the feather. You are much older than you look, Mr. Asterion. No, you do not look a day over 30, though. Not at all. Compliments aside, when Oscar told me you were looking for your inheritance, I thought you were looking for your relative's money. I understand the feather holds, uh, must hold priceless sentimental value, but I'm surprised that's all you wanted. Money? Yes, everyone was removed or left in such a hurry. Most, if not all, left their savings here. He had a sizable amount saved in, well... Diamonds. And there was the, uh, interest on top of it. I believe the hotel owes you a hefty, a very hefty sum, and that is without taking into account any compensation for what happened. So you see, I, I want the money too. Oh, marvelous. If you are staying here for the night, would it be an honor to host an old employee's family? We could discuss this matter tomorrow. The latch comes undone, unlocking all the heaving and sobbing suppressed within the peacock's shuddering throat. Pedro turns, to in, turns in his seat and wraps his arm tight around Oscar. The young bull lets out a brief moo of surprise at the sudden surge of emotions from his companion. He pats the old man's back, a shifting in the tight, clinging embrace. With a snort, he looks up to you in a stereon. Red embrace um, red embarrassment burns inside the ears and on top of his snout. He's had a long day. Could you guys give us a minute? Of course. As soon as possible, we'll get the you two we'll get you two keys for your rooms. Sounds good. Thanks. As you and the Minotaur move away together, you give Asterion one last reassuring smile, and then you leave him behind to continue entertaining the other guests. Meanwhile, you go find where Argos went. Hmm. 
Well, well, we'll save the conversation for with Argos till next time, guys. I'll uh, end the part here, so I'll see you around.